Welcome to the Docs Who Lift podcast, where we distill and simplify the complexities of a healthy lifestyle, exercise, medicine, and weight loss. We're excited to bring you a podcast that's a prescription for clinical practice, scientific recommendations, and just real life. This This is the Docs Who Lift podcast. Hey, welcome back to the Docs Who Lift podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Spencer Nadolsky, and I got my co-host, Dr. Carl Nadolsky Jr. Today, we're going to be talking about functional medicine. It's the first in our series, the fallacies of functional medicine. Yeah, so if you... Some other F words that are dropped in this. We've talked about this a little bit before. Uh, I've been on other podcasts talking about it in the past as well. And we recently busted Hyman's myths. Bustin Hyman's myths. Um, he's a, he's like one of these super, super quack uh, functional medicine guys. So uh, over at the Cleveland Clinic. But there's Jeffrey, what, do you have the history of functional? We always have to talk about well, the quick I, history. Jeffrey Bland, yeah. blah, 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 blah. He's not even a physician. He's a so, PhD, blah, blah, yeah. blah. So yeah, so I, and I, so I went right to the Institute for Functional Medicine. There you go. Um, and uh, so what is functional medicine? And, and I will argue before we even get into this, the fact that they even call it that is all is right off the bat. It creates this divisive narrative. Basically That's good marketing. All other medicine is dysfunctional, right? It's great well, marketing. So, so what is this? Um, so the Institute for Functional Medicine claims that functional medicine is a systems biology based approach Ooh. that focuses on identifying and addressing the root cause of disease. Each symptom or different diagnosis may be one of many contributing to an individual's illness. So, and there's much more that I'll, I'll read in a second, but let's just, let's just digest that for a second. What does that sound like to you? What is, what does that sound like? What is that? What else describes that? Maybe all of medical school? Yeah, but what what they're so here's what they're doing. They're they're preying on people who have been shunned from the usual system because they got ten minutes to talk to the doctor who has to see thirty people in the day. And that's not because the doctor wants to, it's because the system that was created makes them do that. And so they don't even have time to talk to their patients. So the patient gets harmed because they're not listened to. They feel like they're harmed at least. They feel like they're harmed and not listened to. And and sometimes they aren't. And there's maybe not time to do practice very, very good medicine. So then they go and, oh, functional medicine. I want a doctor that's just not going to throw a script at me for my digestive issues, uh, for my IBS. And somebody listen to me and help me do an actual elimination type of diet and will actually talk to me. But I'm going to have to pay him $500 (laughs) for the hour. And then he's going to do a bunch of tests on me. Uh, that will maybe shed some light, and then he's going to give me these supplements that treat the root cause. So this is this is what this uh, model has marketing. basically yeah. created. Uh, it's a very it's very good. now that I understand marketing, it's it's extremely good marketing. Yeah. So then they they have a graphic, um, it's several graphics actually. If you go to this website, and it and it illustrates what they what they say is a diagnosis can be the result of more than one cause. Well, duh, of course. And it's called a differential say, diagnosis. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, for <laughs> example, they say depression can be caused by many different factors, including inflammation, which. What's what's so ironic about that is that they always do that. Like every all these people are like, oh well, well it's the inflammation. It's the inflammation. It's a Why very. Don't they ever talk about the root cause of inflammation. It's a very that's what, that's umbrella term. Do. Trash. Yeah. They call it a trash can yeah, term. It's like it's like yeah, everything so can kind of go into that bucket. Of course. And it says likewise, um, a cause such as inflammation may lead to a number of different diagnoses, including depression. Well, yeah, they still haven't talked about getting to the root cause of whatever well, is the inflammation or whatever, but the. Jeez, God, this makes me so mad. Yeah, <laughs> and true. anyways, they, they so they say the precise manifestation of each cause depends on the individuals. Now, this gets pretty, uh, this is real. This is like real medicine right here. The, uh, the precise manifestation of each cause depends on the individual's genes, environment, and lifestyle. And, you know, and then they go on to say only treatments that address the right cause will have lasting benefit beyond symptom suppression. That's exactly what evidence-based mainstream medicine has ta- has done forever. That's always been the mantra. That's like the first thing they tell you when you go to med school on the first day. My God. Yeah, yeah but I, like it's, it's, it's because they're preying on, again, the docs who don't have enough time. So then they go like, here's a referral to see a, some other doctor or here's a medicine yeah. that ails you. They don't have enough time to talk about sleep, diet, 
physical activity, yeah. stress, family dynamics, job dynamics, yeah. whatever All things, which really, by the way, should, um, this is why we need, uh, better support in our healthcare system for multidisciplinary treatment of people. We need a team approach. We all try to do it. Um, it's hard. unfortunately that's, yeah, we, we have a dysfunctional healthcare system. Absolutely. It's terrible. We rail against it all the time. It's very frustrating, especially when then people get taken advantage of by these people um, who then not only, you know, hopefully some of them do a, a good job of just, you know, doing nutrition and stress and exercise and all the things. But when they start going beyond that stuff and doing quackery, that's where I get mad because that's harming. I end up getting the referrals in the endocrinology clinic because they, 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 make up so much BS about hormones and, and we'll get to that, that stuff. Yeah. We've had some podcasts about this. We had uh, hormones demystified on, on the call uh, once um, and talking we about, about the, the battery of tests mm -hmm. with, um, with uh, Dr. Um, Baraki and um, uh, the barbell medicine guys. Um, what Jordan? Jordan. Yeah. Was he on that one too? Yeah. They, they, they were both on that. We were talking about how these places, they just order millions of tests. Yeah. They don't know what to do with them. And, and they're inappropriately done within the clinical context because it takes more than just ordering a slew of BS tests to get to what's going on with people. Yeah. So, so here, here's, here's, if I could condense it all, you have functional medicine saying that they're going to get these doctors that say they're going to get to the root cause. You go to them, you pay them lots of money where you'd otherwise pay a copay and go see a doctor and you'd get 20 minutes with them yeah. or 10 and minutes. Insurance or, doesn't cover and insurance it, won't, won't, assuming. will not cover it unless maybe that they're doing a concierge type of model, but most yeah. functional medicine doctors take cash. So they get more time to talk to you. I know this because I do direct pay. I don't, I don't take insurance at this moment. So I understand it, but it's, it's not the doctor. It's the system that they're in. So these functional medicine, they take cash. You get, you do get more time with them. So it's nice. You get to, you feel like you're listened to, you, you feel like, they're addressing all holistically, like your entire lifestyle. But here's where it goes wrong. They they will then say they're going to treat your underlying disorder. And, tr and it makes an us versus them. He'll ba they'll basically say they're allopathic or osteopathic. Which I suppose we sound like we're doing <clears throat> us versus them. But we're, I guess we're kind of trying to provide the counterpoint. We're, we're trying to show that like it's it shouldn't be an us versus them. It's the system. Right. I think that's... Right. So, and what, what happens with the, with functional medicine though, they, it's the, they, they're making this up. So what happens is that they'll, they will, they'll, they'll charge you then on top of that visit fee, hundreds, if not thousands of dollars worth of batteries of tests. And now if you go back to our other podcast, we talk about this, but there's pre-test probabilities. And I've talked about some of the things that I've done. I've ordered batteries of tests before. And sometimes things come back positive that you're like, I shouldn't have ordered that. It's like, I didn't, Shouldn't have gotten that in the test because then you go down a rabbit hole. And then also there are tests, if they're not even validated at all, meaning they haven't been rigorously studied with like, pop like the Dutch, you know, hormone testing that these guys right, or adre adrenal, that, yeah. uh, you know, these, these, uh, diurnal, uh, salivary, um, yeah. tests without, and so you basically need population norms. And then you have to go in and say who actually has, uh, that can find out the cutoffs to where, who has, who, who develops the disease or who, who's, um, who is at risk for complications for such. So they don't do that. They order batteries of these tests. Some of them are validated, some of them are not, but some of them, even if they are validated, they shouldn't be used for screening purposes. Um, right. There's a reason that there are like very statistically based, um, evidence-based guidelines to support how we just screen people. Like everyone needs their cholesterol check, their blood pressure check, their blood sugar check, because we're screening for those fairly common and it's well and it's found that, that sneak up on people. And well and well that and that it's found to to have much more benefit over yes. potential harm and over diagnosis and over testing and yes. money spent. They, As they, opposed to like in my world in endocrine, we don't just screen everyone for excess cortisol tumor produ uh, yeah, excess cortisol producing tumors like they right. do. Like that's that, that's totally inappropriate because then you, you end up with lots of potential harm when it's when it needs to be within the the clinical context and the statistical probability. Understanding the statistical aspects of the tests themselves, lab tests are not perfect. Like people seem to think they are. Yeah, let's so let's let's go over an example. So the big thing that was going on right now, and we don't this functional doctors whether they're doing this or not, is full, our full body MRIs. Now the issue oh, is, 
if you find what would be, my brother would say a ditzel, a little thing on somewhere, let's say your thyroid, that's the most common you know mm-hmm. thing where you'd see a, a little nodule on the thyroid. I may have a nodule or not, but it's yeah. it's it could, likely benign. Or even this is if a it great is example, because I can go over all that stuff. Yeah. Sure. So yeah. So anyway, you find this thing and, and you go through, you go down the rabbit holes and you potentially have to have it biopsied. Maybe it was missed biopsy, all, all sorts of different things. Yeah. Well, let me, let me explain that because that's a perfect example, actually, thyroid. So thyroid cancers are not really uncommon. Um, thyroid nodules, little growths on the thyroid are very common. And um, if we just started doing ultrasounds on everyone, we'd find a lot of nodules. Well, there's a reason we don't just do thyroid ultrasounds on people. Um, For example, several years ago when I was in fellowship, uh, South Korea decided that they thought maybe they should, as a country, do thyroid ultrasounds and screening. So if you imagine a graph that you're looking at me and, and you see the incidence of thyroid cancer. So suddenly the incidence dramatically went up. Of and incidence cancer. is how many times Meaning, they've, yeah. how, how, how often how it's, much it's found. Diagnosed. And, yeah. and that's because there are a fair number of these thyroid nodules that are very low risk, low um, concerning thi- actual thyroid cancers. Thyroid cancer in general is not a very concerning cancer. And so if you, on that same graph, as the incidence, the, the amount of people who had thyroid cancer suddenly skyrocketed, the death from thyroid cancer stayed at almost nothing, like flatline. And so that's what, so I explain this to patients, you know, multiple times a day, because we get these discussions and we have to decide, okay, how do we decide which thyroid nodules we're going to biopsy? So luckily, ultrasound is actually very good at giving us some statistical risk of it being a thyroid cancer. And we use that plus the size and their history and all these different things to decide, okay, are we going to biopsy it? Because biopsies are not perfect either. We got to get the right amount of cells in it. We needed the pathologist to look at it and say, oh, okay, now this has a statistical chance of it being a thyroid cancer or not. Then we have to decide with our surgeon friends, okay, are we gonna take it out? Are we gonna take out half of it out? Are we gonna just monitor it? Because these are oftentimes low risk, low growing. Because the more you do, the more risk you have of doing harm, more surgeries, radioactive iodine. So all these things, so we have to be very careful. Not to mention patient anxiety and worry, and then then ongoing ongoing, uh, uh, surveillance of all these different things. So so let's go. Okay, okay, so go, going back to functional medicine, they will do batteries of tests. Yeah. Some of them validated, but not validated for screening, and some of them completely not validated at all. And what they'll do is then find little bitty things here and there, and then go to selling supplements that don't do anything to help the person to sell that person that say they're going to treat some fake disease or issue that they have found on these fake tests. It's, yeah. it's a, it's a crazy money and not, not all the people that call themselves functional medicines doctors yeah, do we this. Could. I mean, we could do it just for the aspect because we certainly embrace the concept of it. The concept's Absolutely. good. We are the, the biggest shills for lifestyle medicine, diet, exercise, sleep, stress reduction. That is so hugely important, but guess what? There's a lot of medical, a uh, lot of disease that has nothing to do with those things. Yeah. And so it's interesting, you know, they say um, on the Cleveland Clinic functional medicine website, which is really disappointing that they did this um, because it, it really s- seemingly validated in a lot of people's eyes. They got Mark Hyman there. And th- they say that the that what they've figured out is that there are six root causes of illness um, in, and ingredients for optimal biologic function. And they say, learn the nine steps in the right order. And it's not just the food. And they, and they have this whole thing um, and then they go, so they say, thankfully, there are only six root causes for illness, infections, antigens, toxins, stress, poor diet, and genetics. Now, some of that's not totally wrong, but God, that's, oh, that just seems like a, a very false um, something. <laughs> it's giving some sort of false identification to people or something. And then they say the second task is to identify the seven ingredients needed for optimal biologic function. And and they they get into this whole thing with you start with the food, then you got to remove the allergens or the sensitivities, then you got to fix the gut, which is a huge red flag of quackery. And then you got to optimize nutrient status. Well, the well, that's everyone we yeah we need to improve everyone's nutrition and exercise that's first line in every single evidence-based mainstream guideline out there and then of course they get to the thing that really drives real hormone doctors mad they say 
balance hormones because that is big red flag. red flag of quackery that I've ever heard of in my life. Um, and that's why they start checking into all sorts of hormones very inappropriately. And guess who gets the referrals once they have an abnormality and they don't know what to do with it. <laughs> we yeah. do. And then we got to help reduce anxiety. Hope, you know, maybe find some, you know, if we, if we have to figure out if something's wrong, but oftentimes there's nothing wrong. It just caused a whole bunch of anxiety and cost. And then they talk about support energy, metabolism, enhanced detoxification, which is another red flag, uh, kind of a BS thing. They talk about mind ba body balance, which is great. Absolutely. And then they talk about this, this is an interesting one. I'd love to have an infectious disease doctor see what they think about this. They say, look for hidden infections. That's got to be like why they, they, they tell everybody they all have um, uh, intestinal uh, yeast. Yeah. Isn't that what they, they tell everyone yeah. that? Everyone, everyone who sees a functional medicine doctor, if, if they're a true quack, can, they, have can, doctor, they all can, have candida. candida. Um, which is a huge deal, by the way, if it's true. Um, they all have adrenal fatigue. Most of them have some sort of thyroid disease, even though they don't have any of that stuff. Well, and, and they have IgG antibodies uh, right. for the food sensitivities, and it's yeah. basically completely bogus. It's basically what you eat most of are going to show positive on that stupid test. And like, yeah. and, and they make a lot of money from they, – they make oh. money from the testing, then they make money from the supplements, and then they make yeah. money from seeing you at a at – an, and, yeah. and they all to make and, you think that they're treating the root cause. And then they and then they say all the other real doctors are getting paid by big pharma, which is not true. No, at all. No, not even close. They're making way more money than everyone else because they're they're, they're they sold their souls, unfortunately. Yeah, unethical. Uh, same thing. You know, it's funny with the compounding medicine. Just to take oh, a yeah, side right. side note, anybody listening, we of course talk about GLP ones all the time, but the. The compounding thing has become an issue, and I'm sure some functional doctors are. I, I'm sure. I'm sure they're cut from the same cloth. Oh, they're getting into yeah. this stuff. So compounding uh, GLP one medicines, it's cheap. It's it's cheap, and you can get these medicines. I, I I don't blame patients for wanting to go that route. You can't get the medicine, and when you can, it's ridiculously expensive. Thousand yeah. dollars, unless you have the coupon. Sometimes it gets down to five hundred bucks, and that's Zet bound specifically. So you can get these uh, compounded versions for. You know, somewhere around two hundred or three hundred dollars directly to your door, um, but who and knows what they are now. They obviously must have some similar molecules because there are. Definitely oh yeah, they. Like, oh my god, I have all the right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, no, things, they, but, they, uh, but, they, but they, they, they. You can get studied. You can get you know, them certificate certificates of analysis. Mean, so you look, don't know the purity, the, all the different things, and we've had we've. Yeah, there are a lot of concerns with it because there are side effects of medicines, and now these are medicines that we don't know exactly. What you know, if they're the same stuff and how the dosing it, oh my god, it's yeah, it's I wouldn't mess sad. around. So, um, money, make it, oh yeah, so the point is that we they then say we were like, I don't go the compounding route. Patients or people are like on the internet, well, you guys must be in bed with big pharma. It's like, no, ironically, there are compounding influencers out there making tens to hundreds of thousands, the influencers. Are making yeah. that much they're money? Not, not even doctors. They're not doctors, they're just people who got paid now to say, "Hey, by I a compounding this pharmacy, BS compounded place," and, they, and, and they're, they're making, so they're, they're making, making way so more, money. making they're more money than us. Yeah, yeah. way more. Not yeah, those. way more. And so, what's it, ironic? And then we're, it's like we're sitting here going, like, we're just trying to make sure you don't. And then get... Spencer calls me a martyr. Yeah, my brother is an absolute martyr. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, like, here's the deal. So this is, but this is all kind of goes back to the functional medicine. Like yeah. they're big pharma shills. Don't listen to them. In, but instead, buy my supplements that you're paying astronomical amounts of money for that I get kick, truly get kickbacks for. Not like big yeah, pharma. Literal. Like you're literally buying it direct. from them. They're taking direct cuts of that amount of money. And and then also of the tests and, and just it's so unethical. I, I just, yeah. I can't believe and, these people. And then if pe have... When people get better, sometimes it is just because they really just had time to, to sit down and work on their stress diet exercise. Maybe yeah. they did have, uh, maybe those things were the real causes. And yep. then they think it's the supplements. And remember that poem that that one guy. Uh, yeah. Regression, the, uh, regression to, the mean. to the mean. Yeah. So explain what that means. Regression to the mean is like, okay, so let's say at base, you're at baseline, your average of what you are uh, feeling healthy and back pain's a good one. Back pain's a very good one. So a lot of people get back pain for what? Just nobody knows exactly what it is. Pain's a very interesting thing. So they're having back pain for a little while, and they go and do all these crazy uh, gimmicks that they found online, and the back pain got better. Well, um, the back pain 
probably was going to get better regardless of what you did with some sort of types of movement, whatever. Same thing with, let's say, uh, people go to the doctor because they're sick. They have a viral infection. They mm -hmm. demand antibiotics. Yeah. They say they'll only get really better. bad, by the way. But... It will only get better with antibiotics. I know this. And it's so the doctor keeps giving it to them and they get better. But just because they were going to get better anyway. So we see this in, in studies. Um, there's it's regression to the mean, you're, you're just going to go kind of similar back to baseline. So a lot of these people with a lot of their ailments, this is why we have to do randomized controlled placebo controlled trials. This is why they're so important because if you rely on, on anecdotes and a good I, anecdotes are very important to then get clues to then figure out how to, to run these trials. They ultimately if, lead to trying to figure stuff out. Right. But. Right. And so, and you know, so, okay. So here's another example back during the pandemic, people were talking about hydroxychloroquine uh, and um, ivermectin and some of these other things. And people are like, well, this person got better. And it's like, holy yeah. shit. That's so, what, it, but they did study them very rigorously. Very rigorously. Because, so it wasn't like it was totally crazy, right? There was real biological. Yeah. There was some plausibility. The real scientists were like, Hey, there, there's something to this bam, bam and then people really started getting in on it and i think i think it almost forced the scientific community to yeah study. it had to and there it had to tons of studies looking at uh yeah and it's just like and it, it turned out that they didn't do anything they didn't do but anything people still don't believe it because people That's get better unreal. viral infections you can imagine yeah. a viral infection like oh yeah. my god i was feeling crappy then i got yeah. better if you don't uh, die you, you improve from covid unless you get the long covid yeah. So, so anyway, and so then you get all those people, you don't hear from the people that were like, oh, it didn't work for me and that, or they died. You don't hear from them. Right. You hear from the people that are like, this is great. So anyway, this is, is a similar concept with functional medicine. You're giving all these supplements. See, people feel like they're getting better now, now out of the woodwork. Now that's been around, we get all the messages. They're like, this doctor mm -hmm. made me spend thousands of dollars. I paid $500 for supplements for just one month. I still felt like crap. I ended up going to another doctor, let's say like an endocrinologist or whatever, turns out I had sleep apnea, turns out I had X, Y, Z, or it, truly they had like Addison's disease, something very, yeah. uh, very because, dangerous. Because we really do need to get to the true root issue. Yeah. And sometimes it's very serious. Sometimes it's, it is just sometimes it's straight up exercise, sleep or whatever. Yeah. But, um, People hate my one meme. <laughs> People get so mad at my one meme where I'm like, you know, cause, cause, you see the you see a lot of you see you get to see the zebras because that's where they go they end up at yeah. endocrinology it's called a selection bias because I'm they're, they're really but bad, so I see them all the time but. but for most people and this is why functional medicine still does very well if you talk to them and you start going eh, probably the bottle of wine per night and looking at Netflix and your phone staying up till twelve at night is you know, we should probably cut that that's there's toxins in this and they oh, convince okay. you to, to cut down and also I'm like I feel great. It must have been the rhodiola that you prescribed me. <laughs> yeah, but it was just yeah, they improved their life. Yeah. So um anyway, I look we're not going to fault you if you see a, a functional medicine doctor, but like we, we just, do you and, have to understand the principles of this? Our, and I, we all want to get to the root cause. If there are functional medicine docs or whatever out there who are really just, you know, using that term because they're really trying to really promote themselves as nutrition, you know, exercise, sleep, stress reduction, you know, focused people, but they're still doing real medicine. That's awesome. You know, whatever, that's fine. But God, let's not, let's not trick people. Yeah. Just, just be ethical. Yeah. I mean, look, I mean, we talk about our supplement, <laughs> we had a supplement company and, we, and we, we, we like ethically, we there became a point, we too ethical. there was, there became a point where it's like, I can't, like, look, I think berberine, I think actually berberine is pharmaceutical and it's in its properties. It's, it's, it's a drug. It it's basically a drug. a drug. It has some benefits. It has but, some biological mechanisms, but then they they ruined it for but us. But we couldn't lie and be like, you got to take this over metformin and yeah. SGLT2 inhibitors See, and you're, GLP1. You're kind of a martyr too. It's not as bad. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I, 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 well, the, so the, the whole martyr thing is, is it, this gets into the system for anybody who cares to listen. My brother always will take insurance and I just, I hate the system so much that I'd rather get out and be like, screw the middleman, pay me directly. And it'll be affordable. Um, as what I think is affordable. But you just have direct to me. We don't have to mess with insurance. I don't have to send anything, um, making any claims. Um, but it, it, it sets up an issue because insurances can then deny claims yeah, and they control right. you. So then uh, so then physicians end up having to see 20, 30 people. Because on top of that, 
the hospital system that you work for has to take their cut. So for me, I always just like, oh, screw the hospital system, screw the insurance companies out there, just pay me directly and I'm going to take care of you. That doesn't mean we're not going to use insurance for getting you medicine or procedures or whatever else down the line. But when you're working with me, so anyway, it's just a, a little, yeah. uh, it's, you know, it's been a while since I've gotten fired on one of the, um, podcasts that we've done. So just to make sure I don't get fired, I do actually appreciate at least the effort of my community based hospital system where we're, we're really building our, our endocrine department, but it's the bigger system at large. It's so, un, so the, frustrating. I, so yeah, I'm just government. keep bitching and moaning and complaining about it and try to try to fight for what's right for people, I guess. And I'm bitching yeah. It's part, it's that. part of it. Like, I mean, cause we talk about the prices of GM. GLP-1 medicines and, and things like that. It's it's so it's so ridiculous because first you got, yeah, there's big pharma greed. Like, well, like, let's just call a spade a spade. But then they're the middlemen, these PBMs that try to negotiate between the manufacturers and the insurances. Like, why do we need these people? Who knows why? So then all of a sudden these prices of these medicines get jacked up, jacked up to now a thousand or so more dollars when a new study just came out and that we should have just done a whole podcast on this. Which they They cost of dollars a day as opposed to well let's get someone on that can talk about yeah that. let's talk about someone anyway thanks for this right. we'll do another uh we'll have to dive in we'll some more of, of the <laughs> of the functional medicine maybe some of the specific claims we'll do adrenal fatigue and all these different things yeah, i think yeah. we've done that one in the past yeah, but we'll do we'll do more we'll do more all right thanks for listening share this with somebody who's worried about uh functional medicine and thinking about doing that route this podcast is for entertainment and education and information purposes only. Remember, the physicians on this podcast are not your physician. It should not be considered professional or personalized medical advice. It should not be used to replace speaking with your physician or medical professional to discuss your specific health concerns. The topics discussed should not be used solely to diagnose or treat any condition. As a result, we are not responsible for any unwanted medical outcomes. The views and opinions discussed are of those of the host only and do not represent those of any other entities. We'll